goodness, it's so good to see you guys. I hope you're having an awesome Tuesday. Um, I'm really excited. I haven't done one of these live trainings in quite some time. I know some of you have seen my post. I've been traveling a little bit and I came home and really, really ramping up CMW. We've got a lot going on. This becomes a really busy time of year. So really excited for this. But uh, we did do a poll in our Facebook group right here in the Health and Weight Loss for Foodies group last week about, you know, what are your biggest goals? Like, or I should say too, like your biggest opportunities for growth like where are you looking to improve and a number of you this was the number one voted answer said you want to banish belly fat for good okay and so of course like you know this got my attention because as an educator my job is to not just you know give you all the facts but to help you make some realizations about where you are in your life and then also to help you in the right direction right so tonight I'm going to talk about the truth behind belly fat so I want to see who's here live with me if you're here live with me give me a hey Kristen what's up good to see you give me a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay I am really excited about this topic particularly because there is so much talk out there about belly fat and take this supplement wear this belt do these workouts you know and it's, it's all these honestly these products that people are trying to sell you and as you guys if you didn't know the health and weight loss industry the fitness industry is kind of thrown in there as well it's a $63 $63 billion industry right so again like I'm not anti all supplements I do think there are some benefits in supplementation especially because our food supply um, is definitely lacking these days the soil is different now than it was 40 years ago some of us do have deficiencies so again I'm not knocking all supplements but the majority of the weight loss banish belly fat forever products are kind of a gimmick right and um, today I'm going to talk to you about science I'm going to talk to you about um, the, the facts right you know, a lot of you guys have seen me discuss the good the bad and the truth about X topic and um, today I'm just gonna do the truth okay because I don't think there's a good thing about belly fat necessarily I can share all the bad that's pretty obvious um, but let's discuss the truth okay and I'm actually gonna start with the things you might not have heard before and then go to the most common facts about belly fat so I'm gonna give you the good stuff first I'm not gonna make you wait until the very end all right so you're welcome um, so the first thing I want to talk about is fitness when it comes to belly fat and the reason why I want to discuss this first is because it's the first thing that came to my mind because I actually um, did this like transformer kind of workout yesterday um, on the reformer machines and oftentimes people go to Pilates and go to these more core intensive workouts because they think that's going to get them abs right that's going to get them for, for you to visibly see your abdominals okay um, but I want to make this truth known for you okay fitness is a tool it is not the solution to getting that six pack, all right? Um, and here's where that happens. So for example, like I think working your core, I shouldn't say I think, I know, and any fitness professional will tell you this, working your core is very important for overall your functional movement, for your, what I mean by functional movement is your ability to pick things up and put things down, to do movement in your day-to-day -day life, all right? So having a strong core is important for that, it's important for your posture, it's important for your longevity, it's important for you not to have any pain, right, in your back. So yes, having a strong core is super, super key if you want to bear children, all these things, you know, really make us need to have a strong core. Okay, now actually being able to see your abs is a different story. And so some of you guys know me because I used to work at this awesome gym here in Delray Beach. It was called Mint Fit. And it was a cool first experience for me working in a gym because I had a really great mentor. Her name is Ashley and she worked with bikini competitors. Okay. And so, you know, when you're on stage, right, and being judged on your body, oftentimes you really want to be at a certain body fat percentage. Okay. So women want to be anywhere from eight to 10%. Some people might argue it's less men are less than that. Right. So that is when, of course, you would see your abs. Right. So, but if you are at a higher body fat percentage, you're not really going to see your abdominals. So what determines your ability to see your abs is actually the body fat percentage, particularly in the mid section, okay? So yes, like people who have a low body fat percentage, even if they're naturally lean, they're gonna have abs, even if they don't spend an hour in the gym or don't do any exercise at all. 
okay? Um, and back to the bikini competitor. So, and this is not all, all training modalities are different. I'm sure there are some competitors, even maybe in this group, that have done lots of you know core work and training to prep for a show. But I remember with this particular trainer, those women, and actually some of them might be in this group right now, you can attest to this, did not do a single crunch or an ab exercise for 16 weeks. And they got on stage and you can see every line in their midsection, okay? They had a six pack, an eight pack, if you wanna call it. And it was because the trainer Ashley said abs are made in the kitchen. That's gonna be one of the last things I talk about tonight, but you guys probably know that by now. Um, and so they didn't do a single crunch. Now, from as a fitness professional, I do have my clients do some core work because again, I think it's important for longevity. Um, a lot of times if you don't do core work, it can lead to other injuries um, in your fitness life. So again, I think it's important. Um, but again, you can be doing you know 30 minutes of abs and you know not see your abs. And I, I've had some clients in the past like say, oh yeah, I was doing this like, 30 minute core workout and I was like, why? Why are you doing that? That's the, that's a whole, I don't think a waste of time because I, I, do, I do think core work is important, but again, it is a tool, it's not the solution. So if you wanna see your abs, I'm gonna talk to you today about actually seeing your abs, right? And of course, like I always say abs are made in a few ways. Um, the kitchen with strength training, which I'll talk about in here, here soon, and then also working your legs. Okay, your legs and your glutes, and your glutes particularly, but your legs also are the biggest muscles in your body, right? So when you're working those muscles, you are burning the most calories, number one. Um, and number two, you're elevating your testosterone levels, right? And the more lean muscle you have on your body, the more calories you burn at rest, and that means that the higher metabolism can be. So when you're strength training, you are overall increasing your testosterone levels, especially full body workouts, um, and then you're also elevating um, your, your testosterone, okay? And so that's gonna help you shed fat more okay um and of course people think well i burn 800 calories going to a soul cycle class i don't know you know yes of course like you know the orange theories all these places yeah you're gonna wear a monitor it's gonna say you're burning more calories in the moment with those workouts but overall strength training does have a higher um caloric burn after the workout right that epoch is really high um so again you know fitness can help in terms of burning extra calories and elevating your metabolism which yes can help in terms of burning some fat actually yes in the midsection but you guys like you cannot out train a bad diet right and again like fitness is not even you know it's just a small tool not just for the midsection guys but overall for weight loss in general i've had lots of clients who have lost weight with minimal exercise Right? And I'm not here to say to you, you should not be working out, you know, to lose weight. And like those of you who do my program, like, wait, Chris, you've never said that before ever. Cause I don't talk about that. Right. Cause everyone's on a different journey and that might work for some people, not other people. But yeah, I've had people in the program and some of you might be in the group right now where exercise is not a big part of your journey in the beginning and you're losing weight. And then we slowly add it in as we go, because yeah, you have to adapt your, your body will get used to what you're doing. You have to change, right? So you don't plateau. But again, you know, it's a matter of understanding, you guys, that doing all those crunches, all those planks, you know, the the belts, and I'm talking about the belts. Like again, like, you know, in my experience, a belt, yes, it can help with form, it can help with like bracing your core while you're working out, which is really important because oftentimes, you know, people will say, brace your core, brace your core while you're lifting, and we don't really know what that means or what to do. Um, so the belt will naturally help you do that, especially for heavier lifts. But again, like it's not like the game changer, okay? And if someone says it is a game changer, you know, they might not have they might not have had a lot to lose in that midsection. And oftentimes it is gonna be water weight, okay? Or something small, right? So then you go, let's say it's Taco Tuesday, I'm going to Taco Tuesday after this. Um, you know, you go to Taco Tuesday, have a couple of tacos, maybe get a margarita, you put all the salt in your body, you go home and you look the same, right? So again, um, or you look different than when you had the belt on. So, you know, the belt is just like a short-term solution most of the time. And I'm sure there are stories out there and people that swear by it, but in my experience, I don't see that as the long-term solution whatsoever. Okay, so fitness is a small tool. It's not the solution. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, um, I know oftentimes we hear the talk about stress and how stress, you know, it, you know, plays a big role in the weight loss journey, right? So if we're, you know, stressed about, you know, things with work and our relationships and our life in general, the 
you know, the economy, I don't know, whatever, whatever's going on. A lot of people came to me during COVID. Uh, they came to CMW and saying, you know, I put on all this weight during COVID. I was just so stressed with all the things going on in the world, all these external circumstances, right? And yeah, absolutely, you know, that's going to cause you to eat differently. Maybe you're not moving as much. You're, you know, you're stressed out, so you don't feel like cooking, right? So of course, that's going to lead to weight gain because you're not making the better food choices and movement choices. Um, but moreover, stress, right, the cortisol hormone is harbored in your midsection, like actually a little bit below your belly button. Okay, so oftentimes I've had clients where they're lean, maybe they have like skinny arms, skinny legs, um, and they just carry all their weight in their midsection. Oftentimes that comes from stress. Yes, one can argue if we tend to be more um, what is it like when you have when you carry your weight in your midsection not apple shaped right or it's pear shaped whatever that body type is um, I have mixed feelings about the body types but you know some people just tend to carry weight in their midsection but when someone says that you know my first instinct is to ask them what does stress look like in your life and this is something that I ask on our CMW consult calls okay even in our first few calls I'll say what does stress what does stress look like for you this week Right? And something we say in CMW a lot, Kisa, our mindset coach, that shares this beautifully, stress is a choice, right? Stress is the byproduct. So stress is not an emotion, it's a byproduct of thoughts and other emotions we create from that, okay? It's the result of we're never gonna achieve X, Y, Z, or this is going, in my, going on in my life, so it means this. It's some story we're telling ourselves. All right, so I want to be very honest with you guys. If you are struggling with belly fat, yes, stress plays a role in you carrying you know, stress in the midsection, a thousand percent. So someone might easily say, well then, you know, I'm gonna go meditate and I'm gonna write in my gratitude journal. I have my five minute journal here I love. Um, you know, I'm very big on writing affirmations of gratitude. But again, that is kind of, it's dealing with it, but like not enough in most situations. Usually the, the stress to really, you know, um, add up in that midsection, there's a lot going on, right? So you're either like, you know, there's two ways to deal with emotions, right? You sit in it or you create space from it, right? So creating space would be maybe going for a walk or going to do a workout or going out with your girlfriends or, or husband or wife or whoever. Um, going to get a massage, right? You're creating space and dealing with it. Sitting in it is like journaling, for example, um, seeing a therapist or doing some like real intense mindset work, which is what I have some clients do in CMW and some real soul searching and like really understanding like why the stress is festering in you and, and it's manifesting in your weight loss journey and it's holding you back from being where you want to be. And, you know, I know in CMW, oftentimes people come into this journey and, you know, they, they understand that mindset's important, but they don't really know what it means to change your mindset until they go through this work with us. And then their life has changed. Okay. So, um, yeah, stress does play a role in that midsection. So if you're not doing anything to manage or handle that stress in your life, I would highly recommend that be a big part of your weight loss strategy. Okay. Or your health strategy. Weight loss is not a goal for you. All right, number three, um, sleep. I wanna talk about sleep. And this is directly related to stress um, because oftentimes when we don't get enough sleep, we are more prone to stress. And when our sleep is inconsistent, we are more likely to have inconsistencies with our emotions, right? We're more of like, we're more moody, we're more of a roller coaster, we snap more easily, we have more cravings when our sleep is off. I know I do, great example. Um, so sleep means more than you think. Okay, when it comes to belly fat, okay? Because like I said, right? Like when we don't get enough sleep, it is going to, again, affect our ability to handle and, and process, you know, things in our life that may cause a stressful response, okay? It's going to cause us to eat more sometimes because when we're sleep deprived, we're hungrier or you're craving less healthy foods, right? You're craving carbs and, or unhealthy carbs, I should say. Not all carbs are the same. Um, maybe you're less likely to turn down that extra drink um, you know, and, and also too, it affects your hormone balance, right? There are so many questions and I'll get into this soon about your hormones, right? And I want to talk about your hunger producing and your hunger suppressing hormones right now, leptin and ghrelin, right? So, um, leptin is your hunger, uh, suppressing hormone, right? So it's supposed to help you tell yourself not to eat anymore. It helps with portion control. It helps you realize that you don't need any more food, right? So when you don't sleep enough, 
your body does not produce enough leptin. So leptin and ghrelin, right, just like testosterone and estrogen, they are um, inverse hormones, right? So when your leptin is low, your ghrelin is going to be high, right? So if we're not producing enough leptin, that means your body is going to have more ghrelin. And this is your hunger creating hormone. Right, this is why you're wanting all the not healthy foods. <laughs> and you guys, like, I'm not, I'm human, I'm not perfect. I almost said I'm not human, oh my gosh. Um, and I, my sleep is, that's one of the things that I I work on too. Like, we've done this in our habit challenges in CMW, like, I have to get to sleep on time, right? Because when I don't get enough sleep, it affects everything. And I'm pretty good about my nutrition, but not when I don't sleep. Doesn't happen. Um, you guys, full disclosure, oh my gosh, I was snacking, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but I'm gonna do it. Um, I was snacking on dark chocolate almonds while I was at Trader Joe's today, shopping for my book club event on Thursday night. Uh, yeah, so I just said it. And I'm not, you know, yes, am I a little embarrassed? Maybe, but like, again, like I, I'm, I'm in a sleep debt, right? Sleep debt means I'm behind on sleep. Um, you know, last week I had some longer nights and I went to bed later than I should have last night. And so, yeah, like, I'm like, oh, like I'm, um, haven't eaten in a little bit. I'm hungry. Dark chocolate almonds sound amazing. Let me get them. You guys, I know better than that. <laughs> and I know you do too. Um, but anyway, sleep means more than you think because yes, like we are going, we're not going to produce that hunger suppressing hormone, um, that we need that leapt in. Um, and also we're, we're gonna, our stress levels, our cortisol are more likely to fluctuate and we're going to produce more of it because we are not equipped to handle stress the next day. We don't get enough sleep. So your sleep plays a huge role. And CMW, we talk about this all the time. How many times have we made a sleep goal? How many times we've talked about, oh, you're in a plateau right now because you haven't had, you know, the consistent sleep that we need. And I work with really busy people, guys. And we work with, you know, people that own their own business. We work with nurses who work night shifts. We work with people that work all kinds of hours or people that have kids and they don't sleep through the night. Like, I, I understand that sometimes that sleep is out of your control. But what I can tell you is that there are other ways to manage your stress, number one, so we can banish the belly fat for good. And number two, there is a way for you to catch up on sleep. So we have less of a sleep debt. Okay, I can have a whole conversation on sleep debt. There's a lot of talk about sleep debt if you watch, if you read or watch any sleep science, super interesting. Um, all right, so that's number three, sleep means more than you think. Number four, um, body shape can play a role. And I said this earlier that like, you know, I'm not somebody that really harps on body shape because I feel like if you do, you're almost manifesting that you cannot succeed. Like, oh, I'm just stuck at this size, right? Like I, there's no transformation possible for me. And that's not true because transformation can be possible with, with anything as long as you put your mind to it and you have the right strategy, it's totally doable. You know, Body shape for me, for example, like I know like I'm super rectangle, we call it, right? Like I am straight down, I have no curves, um, but that doesn't and, but that doesn't mean that I don't gain belly fat. I totally can. If I'm not watching what I'm eating, I'm not watching my sodium intake, I'm not sleeping properly, you know, all the, oh, I'm not getting my meat in, like all those things will totally affect the midsection for me. And I don't have, I'm, my body does not tend to carry weight in the midsection. Me personally, I tend to gain it everywhere, right? Because of the rectangle shape. That's just me personally. And yes, some people will say, well, uh, this is my body shape. So, you know, I'm always going to have this belly fat. No, like you might be more prone to carrying it there. But again, like through a proper strategy, nutrition, fitness, managing your mindset and having the right accountability to get you through it, you can change your body how you want to, you know, like the only exception is for me, for example, I'm naturally more muscular, right? So I have more type two muscle fibers than type one muscle fibers. So type one muscle fibers are like those long and lean, like ballerina um, looking physique. And as a kid, I always wanted to look like my friends or those models or those celebrities who had that physique. I was in ballet when I was a kid and I wanted to have that that physique and even like in high school I wanted that but I don't know when I made I made the switch maybe it's my senior year of high school I was at Penn Relays I, I ran the four by one and the four by fours I was a sprinter and I was at this track event and I saw these girls from all over the country even all over the world there were colleges they are and they were muscular and they looked amazing and they were so fast and I was just like wow like 
Now I like look up to girls that have muscle. And so I think that was a major turning point for me because where I, where I went to school, like middle school, high school, like most girls weren't super muscular and I just felt like an outcast. Um, and I, you know, I counted calories. I ran like a crazy person because I thought running would make me skinny. Right. So again, I wasn't really happy with my body shape. Um, but now I'm kind of embracing that. Um, but again, there's pros and cons. Like I have to be mindful of what I eat um, because, yeah, I can gain weight pretty quickly, you know. Um, and so, again, this is my, and I was telling my friend Clara it's on our trip, you know, maintenance is not easy for me. I work really hard. Right. And I teach clients how to do the maintenance phase as well. Um, and it's not hard for everyone. You know, for me, I have to watch. But, um, you know, yeah, sometimes there is a, a, a a benefit of accepting your body yes and i'm all about body positivity right we have a whole um you know module on this in cmw in our 16 week program so i am all about accepting your your body but again like i want you to be healthy and having a lot of fat in the midsection is not healthy especially if it's visceral fat right that's fat around like the organs um and that's not good right and so that's something that we want to be mindful of and if you ever do like an in-body assessment um there are so certain assessment machines that can test your visceral fat right so um and if you ever do that they'll give you body fat percentage and they'll give you fat in different areas of your body that's something you can always look into um again i think overall not everyone needs an in-body machine but i think as long as you know you realize like too much fat on the midsection it's not good for your heart not good for your organs um it's not good for your mobility you know it's not comfortable right uh so again like even if your body is prone to midsection you know carrying the weight you can still change that like through proper diet um i'll get to nutrition last but number five reason or number five truth behind belly fats okay is don't always blame the hormones i think this is the biggest one because i work with a lot of women particularly but men as well i love working with men um and oftentimes women will say well it's just my hormones like yeah like i just you know my thyroid's off you know i have hashimoto's and you know all these things and although like you know having an underactive you know hypothyroid for example you know um can make weight loss like for some people and not for most people i honestly in cmw we've had a lot of success with people with a thyroid condition um, but yeah it can maybe slow it down a little bit but it doesn't make it impossible at all um, oftentimes you know by changing up your movements and changing up the other things i've talked about tonight your fitness your sleep your stress You'll be fine, right? We're just blaming the thyroid, to be honest. And even women I've worked with who have gone and gotten tested for thyroid, they've had no problems. So they go, it's totally normal. Or maybe it's a little bit low, but not enough to keep you stuck. Especially when like girls in their 20s and 30s come to me and say it's their thyroid. And it's like, well, what about the other hormones in your life, in your body? Now, if your estrogen hormone is super, super high, that can be a different story, right? Because estrogen is a fat storing hormone. So you might be more prone to storing fat if your estrogen levels are through the roof. And that's oftentimes where you might be put on a testosterone supplement, right? Because like I said, estrogen and testosterone are also um, inverse hormones as well. But again, you know, you don't want to assume it's the hormones unless you have evidence you got a test of some sort. And like I said, guys, like I, you know, I think tests can be helpful. But again, like for most people, unless you've tried like a real legit weight loss strategy, like don't assume it's your hormones because most of the time it's not. <laughs> uh, or you would know, like you would have lots of other health concerns. Like look up like the symptoms. Actually, no, let me take that back don't look up the symptoms because you'll think you have like a low thyroid because Googling, you know, symptoms of blank, you're going to feel like you have everything, you have everything. Right. So, um, but no, the truth is do not blame the hormones because again, that plays not a huge role. Okay. Or menopause, you know, people say, Oh, well I hit menopause and now my midsection screwed. Like, yes, as we get older, we can't get away with as much as we could when we were kids or when we were in our teens. 100%, right? You know, I think our metabolism slows 8% every decade, I think is the stat. I want to say 8 to 9%. Could be 7, actually, but it's low. I know it's like in the 7 to 9%. It's not 10, that I know. Um, but you guys, that's so nominal. Oh my God. And let me tell you guys something. One of the reasons I love living in South Florida, even though I, I've traveled, like, women down here inspire me so much. I will meet women in their 50s, their 60s, and their 70s that are more fit than I am right and again like 
because they're doing the right things. They're taking care of their body. They're not eating all these toxic foods, right? That have tons of chemicals and preservatives in them. And guess what, guys? Like, this is why I'm also big on eating clean foods. Because when you, like, if your body doesn't break down, like pesticides, for example, and other toxins and bad crap that's in food these days, guess where it's going? It's going into that visceral fat, um, all the, that, that storage pockets in your body. And then it's hard to excrete that. Your body does not break that shit down. Excuse my cursing, but there's no other way to put it, honestly. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's why, yeah, like eating clean, guys, it's more than just weight loss. And it's more than just body fat or, I'm sorry, belly fat. It's just like your health and your longevity, right? Like getting, banishing that belly fat, guys, it's more than just looking better in a bathing suit. You want to live a longer, happier life. Right. That's actually one of the things I noticed when I was in Europe this summer, um, when I was in, where was I, Portugal, um, Greece, you know, like, yes, like there are, and I'm going to do a whole nother talk on the Mediterranean diet, like the real versus the, what we see in vacation, um, because that deserves, um, conversation. But I noticed a lot of people in Europe with bellies, tons. And because, yeah, their, their diet's lacking, um, you know, and yeah, this comes down to my sixth and final point, which is nutrition. All right. You can be doing all the right things, working out, sleeping, managing your stress. Like you're like the chillest person ever. But like if your nutrition's not on point, that belly fat's not going anywhere. It is true, you guys. Abs mostly are made in the kitchen, okay? Um, and again, like that's where, you know, CMW comes in, I think so beautifully because we understand that you don't wanna just eat, you know, broccoli or and chicken or like, or you wanna be vegan. Like you, you don't wanna eat, you know, like raw vegan all the time, <laughs> you know? Like you wanna enjoy your life. You wanna go to Taco Tuesday. You wanna have a glass of wine. You maybe wanna, you know, have a cookie or some ice cream. Oh my God, there's gelato everywhere in Europe, holy moly. Um, you know, so I feel like that's the hard part. So it's like, well, I want to see my abs, but like, I also want to live my life. How do I do that? How do I truly have food freedom? And my friends, that's what CMW is all about because I hear you. You know what? I'm a fitness professional. I'm on camera. I'm teaching workouts. You know, I have to walk the talk. You know, and I feel like a lot of fitness professionals, we feel this. Not all of them do, but I do. You know, we want to look a certain way and um, I want to help people, you know, live their best lives. And again, but, you know, if you know me, you're not with me, like I'm excited for Taco Tuesday. I love my wine. Um, I do love cookies. I like sweet more than savory. I know some people are the opposite, but um, I want you to have a balanced life too. And it's totally possible. Um, and you know, it, it is a matter of learning balance and moderation, of course. And that's something we teach in CMW because I feel like those words are very abstract. You know, what you consider balance and moderation might not be enough to move the needle. It might not be enough to move that belly. Right. And so that's where we come in and we're, we're realistic with you say, Hey, you know what? Like you're going out this week, you can enjoy X, Y, Z, but then we got to do this you know, because that's going to help you and, and, and help you think okay about that. Not, you know, have FOMO or say, screw it. I'm going to do what I want. You know, this all or nothing mindset, right? So again, that's where we come in to help you with that self-sabotage that might creep up on you. Oh my God, it's been such a tough week so far. It's only Tuesday. I just need like a glass of wine. Holy hell. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a glass of wine on a Tuesday, but like, is it just one glass? What are you eating with that? What about the rest of the week? Let's talk, right? So you really want to banish this belly fat. The truth about banishing belly fat is, honestly, guys, it's usually so much more than just your belly. There's other things in your life that we need to get rid of. There are bad habits. There are bad thoughts. There are bad experiences. There are harmful foods you might be consuming. There's people or, you know, in your ecosystem or there's, you know, other things that are negatively impacting you. Like you're hearing this nutrition advice, your trainer tells you to do this, you know, but it doesn't serve you anymore and you're not seeing the results that you want. The truth behind belly fat is every person has a different way to combat it. 
okay? And this is why I don't come on here and give blanket statement, um, you know, details. I'm not selling you a product. I don't sell any products in CMW. Oftentimes people say, do I have to buy like a protein powder or like bars or is this like an MLM? I was like, no, not at all. I don't sell anything. You know, and like, it's funny, I've been approached by different, you know, companies to sell their products, but like there's none that I really like put my name behind, except for my CMW approved list. Like those are products in the grocery stores or online that I use myself and the clients have enjoyed and they work well. Um, that's what I do recommend, but no, I'm not in the business of selling things. I just want you to get results. I want you to be happy. I want you to stop stressing about this because that stress about your belly <laughs> is creating more belly fat. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. All right, so if you're really looking to banish that belly fat forever, you know, I really encourage you to take a deep dive into what's really holding you back. You know, is it the self-sabotage? Is it you have no idea what to eat for your goals? Is it you're overeating? Um, are you like not sleeping at all? You know, you, have a, you struggle with sleeping. You, your stress is through the roof. You don't exercise. And I, like I said, it's a small tool, but it can still help a little bit. Um, what kind of exercise are you doing? If it's too high intensity, too stressful, that can be leading to your belly fat as well. I should have connected those two earlier, sorry. So yeah, guys, like again, your strategy is your strategy. It's not designed for the masses necessarily. So that's what we do in CMW. We create your strategy with you, for you, and make sure it's something you could do for life. Okay, to banish that belly fat once and for all. So if you're looking for some help, you're ready for that guidance, you want to stop spinning your wheels and stressing about this and making it worse, book a call with us. All right, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. And this is a topic that is really near and dear to my heart because I know so many of you struggle with it. But what I've found is that you haven't gotten to the root cause of it. Okay, or have had the right support to get you through it. Because even if someone tells you all the things to do, I could sit here and tell you 10 things to do for your belly fat, right? Three might apply to you, but like I can tell you 10 things, but you doing it's another story. Information without accountability or education without accountability is useless, absolutely useless. Information does not lead to transformation without accountability. And that's why in CMW, we have nutrition, we have fitness, we have mindset and accountability, the four steps to food freedom. We're here to help you do it, all right? But we wanna see if Create My Weight's a good fit for you. So I encourage you to book a call with us, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. Um, right here in the Facebook group, actually earlier today, I posted, and thank you, Pamela, for letting me post um, about one of our clients who's killing it on her journey right now. Uh, she's lost 14 pounds so far, really changing your mindset, wearing clothes she couldn't wear in for years. She's lost like multiple sizes already um, and lots of testimonials on our website and the Facebook group. Um, again, if, you know, if you're looking for help, I encourage you to reach out. Um, this group is also helpful here and there. I love to do these live talks. You know, if you're not ready for like one-on-one -on -one support or, you know, more support, but you're just looking to learn maybe a couple things, you know, hang out in the group, see what's going on. We're here to help you. Um, I hope you have an awesome night. Let me see if anyone's here with some questions before I sign off. I don't see any questions yet. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll check back later. Have an awesome Tuesday. I'm off for tacos. All right, bye.